Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Welcome to another worship celebration here at St. Paul AME Church in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the southern part of heaven. I'm Dr. Michael A. Cousin, the pastor of this very fine church. And again, I welcome you as we lift up the name of Jesus on this day, on this weekend in which we celebrate the life of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., one who was known as the drum major for justice, for social justice. And as we begin this worship celebration, let us welcome in the presence of the Lord into our lives as we join in together with the word of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house once again. Lord, we thank you for bringing us through another week, bringing us through just another moment. Lord, if it had not been for you with us, walking with us and protecting us, Lord, we don't know where we would be right now. And thus we come with an attitude of gratitude, thanking you for all that you have done and that which you're about to do in our lives. We ask right now that you will bless our prayers. Lord, bless the songs. And Lord, may the word be a blessing as it goes forth unto your people. We ask that it fall onto someone's heart right now and to open their heart and to come into the realization that they need to be in fellowship with you. And Lord, teach us to always be mindful that through you all things are possible. Lord, teach us to always be grateful for the many blessings in which you bestowed upon us of life, health, and strength. And for those things we often overlook, your love, grace, and mercy. And Lord, when you bless us, we'll be quick and always careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For it's in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, your Son, our Lord, in which we pray. Amen. And now, let us be favored with a selection, the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
It's giving time, and we thank you for supporting the church at such a time as this. There are different ways in which you can send a gift to the church for the support of the ministry. First, you can give through Givelify.com, our online giving app. Just go to Givelify, type in the name of the church, St. Paul Amy Church. There you will see a picture of the church and the picture of the pastor. Select the amount in which you wish to give, click, and that's it. Or you can send your gift through the U.S. mail at St. Paul Amy Church. 101 North Merritt Mill Road, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27516. Or if you're in the neighborhood, just feel free to drop by and drop off your gift. We'd love to sit in fellowship with you and just talk about the goodness of the Lord. And remember, my brothers and sisters, we thank you for your support. And as always, I'll pray for you. You pray for me and watch God change things. you've done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love to me. The voices angels could not express my gratitude all that I am I never hope to be yeah I owe Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us look to the Lord in prayer. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please turn your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 37, beginning at verse number 12. Genesis 37, beginning at verse 12. The New Revised Standard Version records our passage in the following. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see What will become of his dreams? Those two verses, 19 and 20. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him. Throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal devoured him. And we shall see what will happen to his dreams. For just a moment, preaching on the subject, Behold the Dreamer. Behold the Dreamer. On this day, on this Sunday, in this particular weekend, we recognize and celebrate the life of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man often referred to as a dreamer. He's been called many things. One, he's known as the drum major of social justice, of justice, civil rights. And it was during August 28th, 1963, at the March on Washington, D.C., for civil rights and for justice, that he delivered his iconic speech. And, 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 and he's delivering this speech to people who are looking for a vision. And after speaking with his advisors before he gave this speech, there were various things that were going through his mind, but he, he, he just didn't know what to do. He, 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 he started one way. He wanted to talk about a, a bad check or a blank check. He wanted to talk about cashing it, but there was something that was tugging at his heart. He had to give him a vision. So he talked with his advisors, and, and they gave all kinds of, of, of recommendations, but he told them, well, thank you so much, and it's and is reported that he retired to his room. He said, I must go and talk with God. And as he spoke with God, God spoke to him and gave him something on his heart. When the time arrived for him to deliver his speech, he was speaking well, but he was stumbling at a particular piece. It just didn't feel right with him. That's what the writer says. And, 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 and he was stumbling. And off on the side was the gospel singer, Mahalia Jackson. She had already sung, and, and it was reported by Roger Mudd, the CBS reporter who was covering it. He said that the table had been set after she sang her hymns. And she's sitting on the side, and she could see that King was stumbling over a few points. And you can hear her on some instances saying, tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him about the dream. And after a couple of times, he heard her say that. 
is reported that he slid his manuscript aside and he stepped back and spontaneously he delivered I have a dream and he spoke about his dream of racial equality and equity and he spoke about the dream of justice and this dream still rings true today behold the dreamer in our passage we learn of the original dreamer Joseph and it was believed that Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob you know, he was born from the wife that Joseph really that, that Jacob really loved Joseph's mother was Rachel and um, Joseph was favored by Jacob Jacob had other sons but Joseph was special along with his younger brother Benjamin the two that were born from his marriage to Rachel and Joseph hung out around the tent while the other boys were sent out to the field to watch the flocks. And it says that Jacob favored him so much, Jacob made him a coat. They called it a coat of many colors. It was believed to be fabric, sort of like a quilt, just different colors. You know, it was unusual to be able to have the different dyes at that time, and, 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 but still have something colorful. And Jacob asked his son, Joseph, go out and check on your brothers. See how they're doing. And um, it was believed that at this time of his life that Joseph was a teenager. Some commentaries list his age at 17. And so he goes off to look for his brothers. And as he's walking, he's looking for them. And the brothers see him coming from a distance. And they say, here he comes, that dreamer. Why they call him a dreamer? Well, previously, he has shared with them dreams that show that God has something special for his life, that they were bowing down to him. And, 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 and there were those, even the stars and the moon were bowing down to him. And he shared that not only with his brothers, but with his father. And his father said, now, what is it? You think your mama and I going to bow down to you? Ah, oh, I mean, they got mad. The brothers were mad. The father was disturbed. You know, this boy seeing stuff. Talk about, I'm going to bow down to him. And he says, I'm on. And, and here, here, here he comes looking for his brothers. And his brothers see him in the distance. See, oh, yeah, here he comes. He's got no protection. Daddy is nowhere near him. You know what it's like to be the younger child and your parents are out of sight. And you got older brothers. <laughs> you had the mercy of the older brothers. Amen. And he's coming towards them. And. And they see him and they conspire to kill him. Not just hurt him, but they want to kill him. And what they do, the story goes on that they take him and they throw him in a pit. He's screaming, please don't do this, but they throw him in a pit. And they leave him there. What shall we do with him? And they come up with a plan and they're going to tell daddy that he was eaten up by a wild animal. And killed a, killed a kid and, and, and sprinkled blood on it and took it back. There was one brother who wasn't there, Reuben, and he was going, it was going to be his job. To, he had already devised in his heart he was going to help his brother out and let him escape, but it was too late. Instead of killing him, they sold him off to slavery and said he was dead. And we know about what happens in the rest of Joseph's life, that he was able to have a vision, that his vision, his dreams Although he did not understand them, his dreams would be the benefit of so many. And as we read the life, these dreams would be the salvation of people, even for those who used him, even those who, who conspired to kill him. His dream would be their salvation. You know, reading over the life of Joseph, about having a dream and looking at the life of Dr. Martin Luther King about uh, I have a dream of what we witnessed the tumultuous events in Washington DC over these past weeks we need to have a vision a dream that will help us to come together as a people 
We need to have a vision, a dream as a church that will minister to those who are broken, who find their lives are now fragmented. We need to have a vision, a dream that will give us hope, that will give us that something on the inside that we can stand at such a time as this. Behold, the dreamer. Uh, uh, we need some dreamers. Can folk tell you're a dreamer? Do they know you're a dreamer from a distance? Can they see that you are a dreamer? You don't have to tell them. They can see it. That dream is all over you. Can folks tell you're a dreamer? Well, let me say, first of all, to be a dreamer, you first got to have a dream. What's your dream? You know, dreams, that they define it as thoughts that fill your mind, desires that fuel your spirit. What is it that gives you fuel? Things, those things which give meaning, give drive to your living. We find here that in the life of Joseph, his dreams would provide hope for so many people. His dreams would be the salvation of so many. The dreamer sees that which may not be able to be seen by others. You know, don't, don't, don't worry when folk laugh about your dream. Because they can't see it. Only you can see it. And you are able to deal with it. God blesses us with desires. God blesses us with a vision. We must be able to take hold and to keep it within our spirit. You know, the dreamer sees impossible within the impossible. The dreamer sees open doors and others see locked doors. You got to have some dreamers here. There it is. This man speaks about racial equality back in the 60s when there was Jim Crow and, and there was so many incidents going on. Sounds like what's going on today in terms of uh, we, we, we see racism back on the rise, sexism. We, we see our land is torn apart. We need a dream. What is our dream? That one day Oh, we shall gather and sing his praises. We shall be able to see some open doors, some opportunities. The dreamer sees things that other folk can't see. Are you a dreamer? Do you have a dream? Secondly, well, well, if you are a dreamer, do you believe your dream? What's your dream? The dream must be God-given. In other words, God-centered. Uh, you can have dreams, but is it a dream that's going to benefit some other folk? There are some leaders who've had dreams, but their dreams did not benefit other folk. What is a dream? There, there are times when God speaks to us through dreams. That's when, it's, that's when you know it's God-given. When it is something that you know that will benefit not just yourself, but benefit each and every person. They hate it on Joseph. But his dream was to benefit his family and those around him because it was God-given and God-centered. Oh, every now and then God gives you a glimpse of what God is doing. God lets you see it, gives you a glimpse of his blueprint that says it, that shows you your living is not in vain. Every now and then there's a, a nuggets of hope that God will give to you to let you know your vision. Amen, is God-given. The dream Teaches us it's going to be received in various ways. That's why it's important. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Because not everybody wants to hear your dream. Not everybody else wants to know what the dream is all about. You know, the dream was received different ways, differently in the life of Joseph. His, his brothers were mad at him. His daddy was mad at him. But you know, dreams are received in different ways. Sometimes they can inspire folk. And then sometimes they can make folk furious. But as long as it is God-given and God-centered, it matters not how they receive it, it's how you give it. Are you a dreamer? Well, now we know you gotta have a dream. You gotta believe your dream. But more importantly, you got to strive to bring that dream into fruition. Bring that dream into a vision. The dream should provide hope. <laughs> In this day and age, we need hope. Hope is the 
anchor. Hope is that bedrock that helps us to stand at such a time as this. Is there hope? Yes, there's hope. As long as God is on his throne, there's hope. As long as there's breath in my lungs and I can call on him, there's hope. Oh, the dreamer has to have hope. That dream must provide hope. Fuse your passion. Although his family was furious about him, Joseph still held on to the dream because it was God given. It gave him hope. Sometimes the dream will provide direction for you. He didn't understand why he was going through so much stuff, but the dream was one that was giving him direction. All through his life, think about it now, 17 years old. It isn't until he, he's, he's later on, middle age, that he meets up with those folk who did him wrong, but the dream sustained him. He did not know he was God, but God placed him in the place where he was blessed to be. The dream, oh, gives direction, but that dream also provided protection for him. Oh, God watched over him. Oh, yeah, 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 God was with him. They threw him in the pit. But God took it from a pit straight on up into a palace. That's what God does for you. When you hold on to God's dream, God will take you from the pit to the palace because you've been faithful in doing that which God would have you to do. God took him. Folks may throw you in the pit, but that's all right because as long as you got God with you, God will lead you from the pit on up into the palace. Let's read further on down in this book. Where he's thrown in the prison. What was the prison? The prison was nothing more than the basement of the palace. I heard one preacher say, that's how God will do your man. A man will throw you in the pit. But don't worry about it. God will walk you on up to the palace. Hello, somebody. When you hold on to that dream. Oh, when the dream is God-centered. When the dream is God-delivered. The dream never dies. Because it can't die. Because it's from God. They tried to kill Joseph. But the dreamer lived on. They tried to hurt him. But the dream lived on. At the years of separation. The ones who did him wrong. Were the ones who had to come and ask for forgiveness. His brothers. And they, they saw how God had blessed him. He had a chance to knock him down. But that's what happens when it's God given. Oh God blesses you with so much stuff. God Brings you through so much stuff. You ain't got time to be knocking back at folk. Because that dream has sustained you. You saw how God brought you through. What about this dream? As we see the events unfold within our land today. Tell them about the dream. Come on. Tell them about the dream. Hello, Sister Mahalia Jackson. I can hear her right now saying, tell them about the dream. Martin, tell them about the dream, Reverend Cousin. Tell them about the dream. Let me tell you about the dream. We have my country, tears of the sweet land of liberty of the I sing land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. That's the dream we have today. That Man cannot hold us down because God has blessed us with a dream. If God did it then, God can show up do it now. But just hold on to your hope. Oh, God leads you in some places, but the dream never dies. Ah, what's your dream? Are you a dreamer. I thank God that I know that through him and by him all things are possible. Oh yeah. God is still blessing. Thank you brother Joseph for letting us know that the dream no matter what they do to you never dies. Oh thank you. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Free at last. If this word has touched you, well, let me tell you, I hope and pray that if you don't have a church home, I'd be blessed to have you here with us at St. Paul. I'd be mightily blessed to be your pastor. And if you're looking for a church at this time, oh, just drop your information in that chat box or just send us an email 
or just better yet, just reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to bring you to the fellowship. I believe it's such a time as this, that's the dream that God puts before us right now. That we're seeing that church is more than just brick and mortar. No, 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 no. The church has left the building. And won't you join us? Won't you be a part of us? And right now, let us just pause for a word of prayer. Gracious God, I ask right now that someone who's listening would take hold and apply this word to their living. Don't let the dreamer die. Don't let the dream go unanswered. Lord, remove whatever fear or doubt they may have in their hearts right now and place with them that which you would have them to do. We pray right now that someone would take hold again, reach out, and to be in fellowship, not just with the church, but in fellowship with you. And Lord, teach them right now that through you and by you, all things are possible. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you for being with us. And celebrate celebrate, celebrate that which God has in store for you. Don't be afraid to dream. When folks see you, when they can see the joy in your heart, let them say, behold, the dreamer. And as always, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance unto you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. And as always, I'll pray for you. You pray for me and watch God change things. Amen. This is my Right.